I think we all knew that we were going to see Alistair Black, excuse me, excuse me, Tommy End, somewhere pretty soon. We were either going to see him appear and debut in AEW, or we were going to see him return to WWE. Uh, I wasn't really sure, thought it could be 50-50, but was leaning a little bit more towards WWE and a couple of reasons why. Number one, it felt really weird that you were doing this series of vignettes on SmackDown and having them go after Big E to just release him. That that felt really strange. Like that, It's a perfect epitomization of the problems of WWE today. Why would you be proactively investing time, effort, energy, money, resources into somebody that you're just going to fire. It makes no fucking sense at all. But now you see somebody like a Samoa Joe gets let go and then he's brought back. You're thinking, okay, maybe they'll realize that that didn't make much sense. Maybe they want to give him another chance or actually give him a valid chance on the main roster. Then you look at the fact that his lady, Zelina Vega, just came back to the company and she appeared on SmackDown last Friday, you're thinking, okay, maybe he's going to come back after all. Maybe we just got to wait for it to play out. Maybe they'll bring him back, you know, soon. Maybe it'll be another month or two, but maybe he'll go there. But then also maybe he says, no, I'll go to AEW and try my chances somewhere else. Well, we got our answer ultimately last night on AEW Dynamite. It was a show packed full of stuff both good and bad, certainly packed with a lot in two hours. And admittedly, it's your first show, you're back out on the road in front of fans, like full stadium or arena fans. Like, I understand you want to go balls to the walls and you want to have something like this. You want to have a surprise like this. You want to have something that leaves people buzzing a little bit. And Alistair Black, Tommy End, um, excuse me, Malachi Black, whatever, um, that appearance that debut certainly had people buzzing but it was a weird surprise it really really was because I'm looking at it and saying a couple of things one your lady just went back to WWE so you have instead signed with AEW like maybe that makes sense but you're also talking about joining a company where you're going to be going out on the road again like that feels really weird and not necessarily the best thing for their relationship. Outside, irrelevant opinion, I understand that, but felt a little weird. Like, if you could work it out where you could both be working for the same company on the same show, like, yeah, maybe you don't always want to be around your partner all the time. I totally get that, but you would think maybe you'd want to. But then there's maybe there's a piece of... You want to learn from the lesson of the past and not both be working there at the same time because if one of you gets shit canned, then you're losing money. Um, I get it. You're protecting against it. Or if both of you get fired and caught up in the same thing. I get that too. At least here you could say you've divested. One's here, one's here. So if something goes wrong with one, you still have the other one. Get all of that. But it was really weird to be to see him so soon in AEW, because I'm thinking, you know, this is kind of standard 90-day, no-complete-clause type of stuff, which is petty of WWE. Hey, we don't fucking want you anymore, but we've always built it into the contracts that we can release you from the contract, but then we can still tell you you can't work anywhere else that's considered a competitor on television for 90 days, even though you didn't actually technically work for us. What a bunch of bullshit that's always been, and I can't believe that the company still gets away with that and that the talent sign contracts that allows them to still do that. Like that's stupid. 30 days, one thing, but 90 days is something entirely different. So I was expecting if we were going to see Tommy Ent appear in AEW, it might still be a couple of months from now, but lo and behold, it wasn't. And then you find out <laughs> as you're reading on the interwebs today that apparently there was a mix up. When WWE brought Aleister Black, Tommy End, up from NXT to the main roster, they didn't change the verbiage of the contract, which is apparently standard operating procedure, to take it from a 30-day to a 90-day no-compete clause. Well, it makes you wonder, well, if they did it with him, it's likely they did it with others. How many others did they do? How in the hell does that happen? And how the hell does the person that oversees that operation that allowed that to happen still have a job today? Especially if that's been their standard 
practice for X period of time, how the fuck do you miss something like that? Even more so, you would say, why the hell do you have a different standard depending upon which brand you're on? Just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It creates risk and the risk like this, where you can sit there and say, hey, instead of there being like a 90 day cool off period, now there's only 30, that's not a lot of time. So if you're thinking about maybe bringing this guy back, you gotta act pretty quickly because now you have somebody else that's somewhat viable. You have a billionaire and that billionaire son and that money that you're going up against in some ways. Like this talent can just pick up and go elsewhere and we've seen several of these guys do that and more power to them. So it's just surprising to me that he showed up so quickly and apparently because of some stupid ass clerical HR error in WWE. Like who the hell's running shit? But the, it, it gets more. Like it's a weird surprise to me because you have them appear and the commentators don't appear to be on the same page here. Like, like hey, that's, that's Tommy, Tommy N. But, but that's not Tommy N. Well, no, that, that's Malachi Black. What the fuck is going on here? Is the communication that poor between Tony Khan and the EVPs and the commentary team? Or was the commentary team just that off of their game, just that poorly prepared that they didn't know exactly what the hell to do? Like it was really awkward and those of you that watched Dynamite last night know what the hell I'm talking about. Like. You don't want anything to distract away from this moment. You are selling this as a moment. You are selling this as a thing. And what you want to have is some kind of unified voice or vision of, hey, I'm telling you as the audience, this is why this is a big deal. And instead they're like, oh, I do that, do that, do that, do that, do that. What the hell was that? That was weird. And then what's weird, but then also not so weird when you think about the egomania of this motherfucker. Of course, Malachi Black, that's a weird name in and of itself. Why can't you just let him go by Tommy End or Tommy Black? Like, why, why has he got to be Malachi Black? Is that even it? Like, I'm more confused than anything else. But of course, he comes and he kicks Arn Anderson. And of course, he has to kick Cody Rhodes. Because Cody Chodes has to be at the center of everything. One of the fucking founders, the EVPs of crap. Doing that founder-like Memphis mid-card piece of crap crap. Where every time you bring somebody in, every time you want to push somebody, they got to go through him first. And like, you just wonder like, why in the fuck does this chode have to sit there and involve himself in everything? A, it's not all about you, Cody. B, you clearly would rather be a TV star than a wrestling star at this point. I think we all know and acknowledge that. Three, admittedly, you gotta know, you're not that big of a deal. You may think you are like the founder of TNA, <laughs> but you're not. Number four, you got the idiots that are going to sit there and say, oh, this is Cody giving him a rub. Excuse the fuck out of me, but last time I checked, Malachi Black, Aleister Black, Tommy and whatever the fuck you want to call him, has more recently appeared on programming that had double plus the viewership of what AEW Dynamite gets on a weekly basis. So if we go off of that basis, Cody being one of the featured players for a show that consistently can't draw one million viewers is somehow giving the fucking rub to a guy that was getting some vignettes just a little while ago for a show that's doing two million viewers-ish. That makes no fucking sense. If anything, you could argue that Tommy N. Malachi Black is the one actually giving Cody Rhodes the damn rub. Really? That's not that crazy to say. Because it's clear everybody that watches AEW know the, who the hell Aleister Black, Tommy N, Malachi Black fucking is. But there are probably more people watching other non-AEW products that are every bit as familiar with Tommy Black N. I almost called him Tommy Black again. Tommy N than they are Cody Rhodes at this point because Cody Rhodes is several years removed from fucking WWE. Like the arrogance and ego of this man is astounding that everything's got to run through fucking him. 
And you start to realize that it's not about him elevating others, it's about him trying to elevate himself. If you can't see that, I don't know what the hell there is. Like, the, the comparisons to Triple H are really dumb and stupid. I totally agree. He's not even in God's class and never will be. But while not perfect in terms of comparison, are there certainly elements of the founder of TNA, the Memphis Midcard piece of crap that you see in Cody? Yeah, damn right there is. And if you don't get that and you don't understand that, you're being willfully blind at this point. So it was just all weird. Weird from the fact that the commentators didn't know his fucking name. Weird from the fact that you probably weren't expecting to see him so quickly. Even though there was some talk that the WWE was going to waive some of the uh, no-compete clauses or reduce them down to 30 days instead of 90. Like, clearly it hadn't happened, but we were talking about it. But then we're finding out that it's clerical error that led to something like this. Like, that's fucking weird. And then the fact that you got to sit there and, of course, you got to throw him at somebody like Cody Rhodes. Like, no, you don't. There's so many other interesting things you could have done. Like me personally, my opinion, if I was going to throw him at anybody right away, I probably would have thrown him at fucking Darby Allen. Because you've got the Darby Allen the piece there, you've got the Sting piece there. Now, Cody, what the fuck you got? The point being is there were other options and probably viable, better alternatives and options there. So it was just really weird to me. I'm happy for him. Clearly, he's getting a new paycheck. I'm sure he's getting a decent salary. Do I wonder a little bit about, you know, while I, I appreciate and respect and understand Tony Khan and AEW are clearly in talent acquisition mode, which is not necessarily a bad place to be, is they're also getting to the point where their shit is way too heavy. They've got too many people, which leads to too many factions trying to feature too many people at the same time, and too few people actually stand out. Like, what is to suggest here, if you look at recent company history, that they're going to get it right with Malachi Black right away? What makes you think that they've got a plan for him? What makes you think that this is going to go well? What makes you think that this is going to end up a whole lot different than what is WWE and NXT runner really is WWE main roster run was? That's what else I find weird about it. Sometimes a change of scenery is beneficial for guys. There's no question about it. Sometimes a change of scenery... And shaking them out of their rut is the best thing that can happen. But sometimes the grass isn't always greener on the other side. And sometimes you find out a guy who goes to a new scenery, he's the, still the same player. He's the same actor, if you will. And he is where he is for a freaking reason. Time will tell. Glad that he's got this opportunity. I think fans need to calm the hell down a little bit in terms of what they expect out of this. Because you've seen some of the people that AEW's brought in, and you've seen especially initially, like, how they've managed them, and it hasn't went all so well. Miro is a perfect example of that. They've gotten back on better footing with him, but they brought him in initially. That was a fucking disaster, and everybody goddamn gonna well knows it. And just because you might be an AEW loyal fan bot that can't sit there and stand to criticize your beloved company, even though... You absolutely should because you want these guys to get better. Like, at some point in time, man, you know, you got to say, they didn't know what the hell they were doing. They kind of figured it out. I'm hoping that Malachi Black doesn't fall into that same category. 